Hi, Twisted Recaps here. Today, I'm going to explain part one of a Japanese sci-fi horror film called Attack on Titan. There will be spoilers ahead, so watch out. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe to get even more cool movie recaps. Now, let's get to it. The film starts with an animated explanation of why humanity has retreated behind the walls and how they have been safe for 100 years. But that's all about to change. Three children, Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa, live within these walls. But Aaron, the suicidal maniac of the group, dreams of one day venturing out beyond them. Aaron passionately tells Armin and Mikasa his dream of going outside of the walls and manages to persuade them to break the law with him and get as close to the wall as they can. Awed at the immense size of the structure, the children don't notice a group of guards who sneak up on them, something that they are definitely going to regret. The guards start beating the children up, but Aaron fights back. Luckily, the captain of the guards shows up and sends the soldiers away before they can do any real damage. He has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Aaron, telling him that a mission is being developed to venture outside of the walls. Just as Aaron is getting excited about what this could mean for the future of humanity, a loud, ominous thud comes from the other side of the wall, and the ground begins to shake. Slowly, a ginormous titan head appears over the top of the wall and peers down at the people below. Freezing the group of children in shock and horror, the terrifying titan starts to kick the wall until it finally breaks a hole through it completely. Having now run away from the now demolished structure, Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa watch as the colossal titan disappears and leaves in its place hideously grotesque monsters. Despairing over the fact that the titans are seemingly immortal, the trio of children watch as multiple soldiers are devoured by the giant monsters. They bolt back into the town, where mass panic ensues. Armin is separated from Aaron and Mikasa who don't realize and keep on running for their lives. All around them, Titans are massacring anyone and everyone that they could get their hands on. Aaron and Mikasa are swept up into a crowd of people who are all trying to get inside a church to hide. However, the two are separated after trying to help a woman and her baby, with Aaron ending up inside the building and Mikasa locked out. Frantic, Aaron tries desperately to get back outside to her, but is stopped by everyone else. Just then, a Titan rounds the corner, closing in on where Mikasa is huddled. Aaron watches on helplessly, fearing the worst. A large explosion knocks the young man away from the window, and by the time he looks outside again, Mikasa has disappeared. Aaron stumbles out of the building and looks around for his missing friend. As he does this, he turns around and sees a group of five titans ripping off the roof of the church. In utter despair, Aaron stumbles off through the decimated town. The film then cuts to two years later, where Aaron and Armin have just graduated from military training and have joined a military branch known as the Scout. A woman, who I'm going to call not Hanji, explains that they have developed a special weapon, Omnidirectional Mobility Gear, or ODMG for short, which allows them to effectively fly through the air to strike the Titan's one weak spot, their neck. Not Hanji explains that the mission is to rendezvous with the most skilled captain in the corpse. Later that night, the soldiers pile up into the military trucks, ready to venture out into Titan territory. Naturally, everyone is terrified of what might happen to them. You know, the whole being eaten alive thing. So as the gate pulls up, a fearful hush descends upon the group. After a little while, a soldier, who is totally not Rainier, mentions to Aaron about two elite scouts that they are going to meet up with. After a little while, the commanders hear a noise in the darkness. They stop the trucks and tell the soldiers to scout the area. All of the soldiers cautiously scout the area, reluctant to venture too far in case a titan shows up. Just as the all-clear is given, a girl called Hiana claims to hear a baby crying. Worried for the child, she runs off into the dark to find it, and Aaron, wanting to make sure that she is okay, follows her. The two soldiers make their way into a dilapidated building. They come to a large empty room where they find a giant titan baby, which is incredibly creepy and kind of raises a lot of questions. The two soldiers manage to escape the giant baby and have alerted a lot more titans to their whereabouts in doing so. So way to go, guys. The higher-ups quickly get into the trucks and take off, leaving Aaron and his group behind. The group tries to run for safety of some buildings. 
However, just as they are about to make it, a massive titan cuts them off. That's when Not Levi swoops in and kills the titan blocking the way, saving the day. Well, not really, as there are still other titans about. But hey, he looked cool doing it, right? Unfazed, Not Levi watches as the mysterious female warrior takes down a second titan. When she lands, her identity is finally revealed. And surprise, surprise, it's Mikasa. Shocked at seeing his old girlfriend, Aaron watches in disbelief as she and Not Levi fly off using their ODMG. Finally safe for now at least, the soldiers hold up in a building to get some rest and tend to their wounded. The general, uncaring of everyone else, goes and secures the remaining explosives from their hiding place. Meanwhile, Aaron finds Mikasa. He tells the stoic girl that he is glad that she is alive. However, she shows him a large scar on her side from where a titan had bitten down on her. But because of the wonderful invention of plot armor, she's somehow still alive. Horrified at what she had shown him, Aaron goes to comfort Mikasa, but is stopped by an apple to the face. Literally, Not Levi then reveals himself and goes over to Mikasa, where the scene becomes really cringy and a little awkward. Upset as Mikasa was once his girlfriend, Aaron leaves the room. Once outside of the building, Aaron meets Hiana, who drags him off to a small building where they both talk about their pasts. Then Hiana comes on to Aaron in a moment that, as the great parodied, El Keith Shadis once said, was awkward for everyone. Frozen in shock, Aaron doesn't know what to do but then notices the eye of a titan looking into the building. The titan rips the wall of the building and drags Hiana out, eating her whole. Surprised and terrified by the sudden attack, all of the soldiers scramble to get their gear on and get to safety. Meanwhile, not Levi and Mikasa fly around like badasses, fearlessly taking down as many titans as they can. Chaos ensues on the ground as soldiers are mercilessly picked up and eaten, including one soldier's boyfriend. Distraught at losing the love of her life, the soldier Lil goes after the truck of explosives, which has been hijacked by a masked stranger. She manages to catch up to the truck and drives it into the legs of a titan, blowing it and herself up in the process, which did absolutely nothing as the titan regenerated. Finally on the rooftop, Aaron watches in hopelessness as all of his friends and comrades are picked off one by one. He uses his ODM gear to kill one titan, but gets his leg bitten off by a different one. He crashes onto a roof where he struggles to regain consciousness. Meanwhile, Jean has been surrounded by titans. Seeing this, not Hanji, Armin, and the rest of the group create a diversion to rescue him. The diversion is successful, but on their way to safety, Armin is grabbed by a titan, terrified he's just about to be swallowed by the monster when suddenly Eren somehow manages to turn up and bravely pulls him out of the titan's mouth, sacrificing himself in the process. A little while later, the remaining soldiers are all stuck on a rooftop, surrounded by titans. Mikasa finds them and Armin tells her about Eren's death. Devastated by the news, although not showing it, Mikasa takes off to kill the titans. Her ODMG soon runs out of gas though, and she falls to the ground. The titan that ate Eren finds her. However, just as it's about to attack, two hands appear from its mouth and tear it apart. In its place is a new abnormal titan, hell-bent on only one thing, to kill other titans. The abnormal titan then goes on a rampage, killing any and every titan that gets in its way. Once all of the titans are gone, the abnormal turns its attention toward the group of humans on the roof. He heads towards them, causing them all to back up in fear for their safety, all apart from Mikasa who recognizes the titan. After a little showdown between the two, the titan collapses. Worried, the group rushes to the ground, where the captain orders someone to cut open the neck. Mikasa rushes to do it, and upon making the cut, a body bursts from its nape. Who is it? That's right, it's Eren. Astounded, the group gather around the unconscious boy, a small spark of hope that they have a fighting chance against the titans igniting in their hearts. And that's the end of part one. The moral of this film is that humanity isn't always good and that it doesn't always prevail even when we think it should. Fear and self-preservation is a strong thing that can drive even the best of us into awful situations. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.